Exodus chapter 34 uh, today as we uh, see that God's continuing grace to his unfaithful uh, people. The Lord said to Moses, chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain, not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up Mount Sinai uh, early in the morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. Lord, he said, if I have found favour in your eyes, then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin and take us as your inheritance. And the Lord said, I am making a covenant with you. Before all your people, I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. Obey what I command you today. I will drive out before you the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land where you are going, or they will be a snare among you. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones and cut down their Asherah poles. Do not worship any other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land, for when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. And when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons, and those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods, they will lead your sons to do the same. Do not make any idols. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days, eat bread made without yeast, as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Aviv, for in that month you came out of Egypt. The first offspring of every womb belongs to me, including all the firstborn males of your livestock, whether from herd or flock. Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb. For if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem all your firstborn sons. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during the plowing season and harvest, you must rest. Celebrate the festival of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year, all your men are to appear before the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your territory. And no one will covet your land when you go up three times each year to appear before the Lord your God. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me, along with anything containing yeast. And do not let any of the sacrifice from the Passover festival remain until morning. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Then the Lord said to Moses, write down these words, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him and he spoke to them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near him and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites that he, what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. Well, what a, a gracious God. Um, Moses makes it very clear, doesn't he, in terms of uh, their hope. He says uh, in verse 9, Lord, if I have found favour in your eyes, then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin 
and take us as your inheritance. There's not a lot we've got to offer God, is there? Stubborn, wicked, sinful, and yet, uh, here's, the, here's the plea, take us as your inheritance. Um, and then we see what God is like in all of this, don't we? This God who is the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin, and yet not leaving the guilty unpunished. And here is this conundrum. How on earth can God be our God uh, when, by Moses' own uh, admission, we are stiff-necked, uh, wicked and sinful? Uh, and that's the glory of the gospel, isn't it, that, that Jesus makes that possible uh, through the forgiveness that comes uh, through him. And so there's a, a, a beautiful um, foreshadowing uh, pointing us to that uh, New Testament, New Covenant gospel. There's also the sense here, isn't it, that, that God is making a covenant with these people. Um, he's entering into an agreement with them, uh, but it's very clear that, that there is a requirement of them that they must obey what he commands uh, today. And then the um, commands are laid out for them in, in, in headline form here. One of them is that they're not to engage with the, the locals in any sort of treaty because they'll get dragged down to their behavior. They need to be um, categoric in removing all the uh, idols and the, the false means of worship. Um, recognizing that their God is a jealous God, they need to worship him only. And then there's a whole range of other things that are added uh, into that. And I still don't know what it means that they're not to cook a young goat in its mother's uh, milk. And as we know from the way the Old Testament story plays out, that covenant that doesn't work. It's, uh, as we saw from Hebrews last Sunday evening, it's, it's, it's not a good covenant um, because it requires a response from us. And, and the problem is that uh, we fail, Israel failed, they could not obey the Lord as he required and so they ended in, in exile um, and so a better covenant was required a covenant that was already planned in God's grace um, through the promises to Abraham covenant based on better promises not on what we've done but what it, what God has done so um, we're, we're seeing that all building towards the New Testament and Jesus and uh, there's much here but let's just focus for just a couple of minutes on, on Moses experience here as he spends time with with the Lord reading something the other day about uh, um, could it really be possible that Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water is that is that possible and the, the, the author was saying well what's interesting here is he's spending that time in the Lord's presence and as he comes out from the Lord's presence he is radiant there is something sustaining something nourishing something life-giving about being in, in God's presence and, and in, in fellowship with him and Moses is unaware of that and it's it's so amazing that uh, the people can't can't cope with speaking to Moses they're too afraid to come near to him um, and um, it's just a, a challenge for us really um, I guess um, one, uh, 2 Corinthians 3 18 picks up on this we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit? Are we communing with God? Moses was the only one allowed to do it in the Old Testament uh, at this time. Uh, all the rest of the people couldn't even come up the mountain. It was just Moses' privilege. But in the new covenant, because of what Jesus has done, we're all invited uh, to come and to, uh, with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory, come and gaze on the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord revealed in the gospel, revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Come and gaze. Uh, come and contemplate come and dwell here and be transformed into his image with ever increasing uh, glory and are we doing that and is it showing in our faces to the people that we meet with uh, recognize that we have been with uh, the lord said of the disciples wasn't it that uh, although they were unschooled men it was obvious to people that they had been with jesus um, and is that our experience are we radiance because of our time with Jesus we live in a difficult world there are lots of reasons to be uh, weighed down and burdened and uh, to have bags under our eyes and and to feel the stresses um, but are we ever radiant because we've got being in God's presence and are we seeking his presence in in that way are we uh, contemplating the Lord's glory perhaps something for us to really uh, wrestle with and think about in our instant age where as Christians we we want instant discipleship we want to pick up things quickly in, in, in short bites and uh, do we ever stop and contemplate the God, Lord's glory are we ever in the Lord's presence are we sustained and nourished in those times 
and are we radiant after we've met with him? Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the very real privilege that Moses had in going up that mountain and meeting with you and uh, in your presence for 40 days and 40 nights. And as he came out glowing, radiant, sustained and nourished, uh, even without food in all of that time, um, Father, we see this wonderful picture of, of what a relationship with you does. And uh, Father, we want to pray that uh, you would forgive us that we don't cherish our relationship with you. We don't relish time in your presence. We don't long for this more than we do. And we ought to pray, Lord, that you would um, cause us to, to spend more time contemplating your glory, more time in your presence, more time um, considering your word, more time seeking your face in prayer. Uh, more time alone with you uh, than we do, that we might become increasingly radiant. And uh, is it the case that, that we have so little impact in our world today because we have spent so little time with you? Father, forgive us and help us. We thank you for a better covenant. We thank you for a covenant that rests not on what we've done, but what the Lord Jesus has done. Uh, Father, we thank you um, for the security that brings. Uh, Father, we thank you for entering into a covenant with people who are um, stiff-necked and sinful and wicked. We thank you that this covenant in Christ's blood, this new and better covenant, um, uh, has come about because he loved us even while we were still sinners. He loved us and died for us. And uh, we thank you for this amazing love. And we, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be caught up more in contemplating the glory of the gospel in the face of Jesus and that we will be changed by that. And we ask these things in your son's name. Amen.